Hello, hello, and what's up to you all? Counting Buffins, the A Square team is in the building. Abram and Ashraf. How are you, Ashraf? Good, man. Nice working with you again. Yeah. Where have you been hiding? I've been counting. Okay, yeah. the, the moolah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's about to be the end of the year. Oh, so okay. I need to put my budget together. Great stuff. Great <laughs> stuff. Great stuff. And tell us, what are we doing today? In today's lesson, we're focusing on company ledger accounts i'm sure you've heard stacks about these ledger accounts so once again make sure that you're with us focused because now is crunch time make sure you understand these ledger accounts because they are important for the exams mm, mm, mm. and i believe that we are about to finish the syllabus if we haven't finished it <laughs> i believe e that we should be now finishing uh, it that's right we should be coming to the end of our curriculum now because now we're putting in the final touches to ensure that we are ready for that exams very soon it's your prelim exam and then very shortly after that it's, it's the, the finals, finals. Mm. Already some mindsets will be taking the prelims as their final. So if you're not yet prepared, make sure that you get all our notes from the first term up until right now on learn.mindset.co.za. Otherwise, we, ho we have also the links to your notes for today's lesson on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. That's where you'll get your view and your download uh, option. But also we have the test yourself que um, questions. Uh, it's a link to Curio. I, when you register on Curio, it's going to ask you questions, and if you answer them correctly, you stand a chance of winning this awesome case your calculator. So information is just there for you guys, and resources are out there for you guys. Even if you miss our previous shows, make sure that you watch them on our YouTube, YouTube channel. We're here to help you. Ashraf, Definitely. challenge them with the okay, challenge question. Okay, guys, questions. watch this question carefully. The f your challenge question says, how do you calculate the average price per share. Now this calculation is critical because you will see as we get into our lesson how this will impact on a lot of things when it comes to the buyback of shares, the issuing of shares, etc. So keep that in mind. The challenge, your challenge is how do we calculate the average price per share? Clear guys? Okie dokie. Can we move on? Let's uh, move on. Right. So, when it comes to companies, you always ask yourself, which are the new accounts that I'll be exposed to? Understand something, that all the other accounts do not change. For example, the loan account, the interest income account, just to mention, two accounts, those remain the same like you've dealt with in other sections. So what are new accounts that you are exposed to when dealing with companies? The first one is income tax. Now you all know that a company in terms of the law is what we call a legal persona. What do we mean by that? By that we mean the company is a legal person. And therefore, the company in its own right will be taxed. What do we mean by that? Just like you ca you, you'll notice that in your sole trader or in your partnership, there was no income tax that the business had to pay. The, the taxation had to be paid by the owners. However, when it comes to a company, the company has to pay the taxation. Right? And you will notice that generally we use 30% because it's easy for calculation purposes, but definitely the question will indicate to you what percentage to use. So income tax, what do we know about income tax? We know that income tax is an expense to the company. Right? It's an expense to the company because this is the amount that we have to pay to SARS in terms of the Companies Act, in terms of legislation, a company is compelled to pay taxation. Keep that in mind. Right, then we have ordinary share dividends. Now you ask yourself the question, why would you, A.B., mm -hmm. as an example, why would you invest or buy shares in a company? Obviously, because you want some kind of a return, am yes, I right? Yes. It's an investment that you are making. Mm. And the question often asked is, 
why is there so much of legislation around companies? The reason for it is very clear, grade 12s. The reason is to protect the consumer. The reason is to protect the investor. In other words, if you want to invest money in a company, then the, the Companies Act and legislation surrounding the companies is there to protect you as Mr. Investor. Why? So that by you investing in a company, you are actually investing in a country. And by you investing in our country, South Africa, a beautiful country, we are improving the economy of our country. So you can see the importance of investment for South Africa. Now, what do you get out of it? What is, what's in it for me as an investor? Surely you want a return and the return that you will be receiving or the investor will be receiving would be ordinary share dividends. That means you're getting a return on your investment. Right, again, ordinary share dividends is an expense to the company. So already you can see we've got two new expenses that are unique to a company. What are they? They are your ordinary share dividends and your income tax. Got that? Understand that these are expenses. Keep that in mind. These are your expenses. Okay, now you come across another account called shareholders for dividends. Shareholders for dividends is a liability account. You will see when we get into the activity how the liability is created and therefore understand this very important critical information. Shareholders for dividends is a liability which will appear in my balance sheet under the item trade and other payables. Keep that in mind. So, if we have to say, where would it appear in my balance sheet? Firstly, it appears in my balance sheet, right? So you know it's a balance sheet account. And then you ask yourself, where in the balance sheet under trade and other payables? Got that? So, we've classified the account. We've said that the account will be created by means of an entry that we will put through. Right, now you come to SARS income tax. You ask yourself, what type of an account is SARS income tax? The answer to this one here is something unique. The answer is, SARS income tax, what type of an account is it? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on what? It depends on whether this account has a debit balance or a credit balance. Got that? It depends on whether this account has a debit balance or a credit balance. Now the question arises, where do we place it in the balance sheet? Again, the answer is dependent on the balance. For example, if it's a debit balance, it would appear under trade and other receivables. Obviously, it's an asset. And if the, the final balance in the account is a credit balance, then it would appear under trade and other payables because it would then be a liability. So clearly you can see, if anybody asks you, what type of an account is SARS income tax? Your response will be clear. It depends. And this is important when you are doing the balance sheet to check what type of balance is indicated alongside SARS income tax. Ordinary share capital clearly is an equity account. It appears in the equity section of my balance sheet, right? A, like your capital account, only now it's called ordinary share capital because we're dealing with a company. Retained income also an equity account and therefore if I ask you now what makes up ordinary shareholders equity your answer would be very simple 
equity is made up of ordinary share capital plus my retained income. So the two added together would make up your ordinary shareholder's equity. Once again, very important, whenever you are working with past papers, and if you come across an item that talks about anything about a premium, please ignore it because that is no longer applicable in your curriculum. Remember, A.B., mm -hmm. they're doing the CAPS yes. curriculum. Okay? Mm -hmm. The CAPS <laughs> curriculum, guys. So whenever you come across ordinary share premium in other activities, in past papers, my advice to you is ignore it and make sure that the question has been adjusted. So once again, no share premium. Got it? Brilliant. Finally, you come to the appropriation account. And what is the appropriation account? The appropriation account is my final account. In other words, I have three final accounts. I have the trading account that deals with the trading accounts, namely sales and cost of sales. Profit is then transferred to the profit and loss account, whereby all my other incomes and expenses are brought in. And thereafter, I open up the third final account, namely the appropriation account. And this account deals only with expenses that are unique to a company. And what are those? Staring you in the face. Two expenses are unique to a company, namely income tax and ordinary shared dividends. So, all of these are the new accounts that you would be exposed to in the section on company ledger accounts. Right, let's get into the question. Let's see, what does this question expect of us? It's Wacko Limited. We are required to use the information to prepare the following ledger accounts. And what are they asking for? They're asking for ordinary share capital. They're asking for retained income. They're asking for the SARS income tax account. We are required to do the shareholders for dividends. We are expected to do income tax and ordinary share dividends. What does this tell you? That in this particular question, you are asked to do all the accounts affecting a company. So based on the information that we are given, we have to complete these ledger accounts. Just before we continue, let's classify these accounts based on what we did earlier so that you can see, yes, also the appropriation account is asked for. So therefore, my ordinary share capital is an equity account, right? My retained income is an equity account. I'm, fo I'm, I'm, I'm laying the foundation for you to remember these accounts so that when we get into the accounts, you know exactly how to deal with them. Then shareholders for dividends, oh, sorry, it's, uh, SARS income tax. We're not going to comment on that one. Why not? Because it depends on the balance. Right. Shareholders for dividends, we know. Balance sheet account, also we know it's a liability. Income tax is my expense account. Ordinary share dividends is my expense account. And finally, my appropriation account, which is my final account. So what have I done? Already, I've set the tone. So you know exactly in which category these accounts would fall. Right. Here's my information. The following balances appeared in the ledger on the 1st November 2012. Ordinary share capital, an amount of 3,200,000. Therefore, in my ordinary share capital, my figure is... So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to try, because of my limited space in terms of the space given to me, I'm just going to use my folio column as well, but that's fine. You know, obviously, that has to go into the money column. So that's my balance 
in my ordinary share capital account, remembering that it's an equity account. Equity accounts have credit balances. On the credit side, my balance when? In November the 1st, so that's my date. The 1st, that's my opening balance in my ordinary share capital account. And then I need the balance of my retained income, and that balance was 640,000. Therefore, 640,000 equity accounts have credit balances, and therefore, these are my two balances. So what am I doing? I'm taking the information, putting it into my given accounts, and in that way, I start my question. But uh, obviously, you want to know more. So, take a break. Don't stray or go away because we're going to show you much more after the break. Of course, when the A squared term is in the building, there's no need for you to fear. During the third break, you do have the challenge question mindset is and the test yourself questions in order for you to stand a chance of winning the Casio calculator. So we'll see you after this break. Welcome back, Matrix. Now we've got exciting giveaways for you guys. We've got a competition which is Get Connected with prizes proudly sponsored by Vodacom. We have four Sony X Xperia L cell phones and 60 55 friend airtime vouchers. Who wouldn't like to have that? Well, all you need to do is to um, go on Curio, register on Curio, use the code which is LEARN, L-E-A-R-N, lowercase or uppercase as long as it's land register and then select your favorite teacher we've got six teacher presenters unfortunately ashraf doesn't make it on that six yet <laughs> 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 well we're running this competition for six weeks we're having different sets of teachers so for this week we do have the six teachers which we have been voting for from last week so get voting right now you can vote as many times as you can and share on facebook the post as many times as you can to maximize your chances of winning so more details on facebook Facebook.com forward slash Len Extra. Let's get connected, Ashraf. Thank you, Avi. I'm very disappointed that I'm not on the... Yet. 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 You're going to put me on? Yes. Okay, thank Save you. Save the you. best. Uh, for <laughs> last. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Avi. Right, guys, let's get back into the question. Remember what are we doing? We're taking given information and we are updating our ledger accounts with the information that has been provided. Okay, so we've, inclu we've done our opening balances in terms of the ordinary share capital. We've slotted it in and we've slotted in the retained income. Now notice something. What did I say? What type of an account is SARS income tax? The answer is it depends. But now you are told it has a credit balance indicating to you that this account is now a liability. We are owing SARS money and therefore when we indicate our balance, okay, there's my SARS income tax because it's a liability at the beginning of the year, there's my date, my opening balance, right? And the balance was 11,000. So therefore, the balance in my SARS income tax account is 11,000 Rand. Notice that the question indicated that it was a credit balance. So in other words, whenever you are given SARS income tax, important, it will indicate to you whether it's a debit or a credit balance. Got that? Brilliant. Let's move on. The next bit of information that we have is shareholders for dividends. Now, we know that. This one doesn't have to specify. Shareholders for dividends can only be a liability. Why? Because that's the amount of money that the company owes its shareholders. Notice, shareholders for what? For dividends. So in other words, that's what we owe our shareholders. Obviously, a liability of 140,000 ren. Therefore, in my shareholders for dividends account, I've got... November the 1st, my balance is 140,000 Rand. Remember, 
that what did we say? We said that that is a liability because that's the amount that we owe to our shareholders. Right. So we've indicated the opening balance. We've slotted them in where they belong. And now we go on to transactions. What happened in November? On the 1st of November, the company issued a further 900,000 ordinary shares at 3 Rand each. Okay? We so now, now, very important. Baby mentioned earlier, while we were chatting during the break, that some of you responded to the challenge question and you mentioned something about par value. Please listen attentively. There are no longer shares of par value. That is not in the curriculum, it's outdated information. What do we have? We have shares that are sold at an issue price. In other words, look at my question. The company issued a further 900,000 shares at 3 Rand each. So what is the 3 Rand? The 3 Rand is what I call my issue price. It's not a par value. Please and forget this concept of par value. It's outdated stuff. It's the old curriculum. It's not part of your curriculum. Please keep that in mind. Okay, so there's the proceeds of the issue were banked. So immediately you're telling you we're receiving money. Bank equals money. Mula. We received money. What's happening to my bank account? My bank account is increasing in value, therefore debited. What am I going to do? I'm going to credit my ordinary share capital account. And let me do that. There's my bank entry. There's my bank entry. So you can see I'm crediting my ordinary share capital. It's an equity account increasing in value. It was 900,000 shares at 3 Rand each. I'm sure that's an easy calculation for you to do. 900,000 times 3 would give you a value of 2,700,000. And you enter that 2,700,000. On the credit side of your ordinary share capital account. Once again, let's look at the two accounts involved. A debit to bank, we're receiving money, asset increasing in value, therefore debited, or, and sorry, not or, and a credit to my ordinary share capital, why? Equity account increasing in value, therefore credited. Right, done and dusted. Next transaction. So we sorted this one out. Now they tell you that SARS and shareholders were paid the amounts due to them. Okay? So let's go back to my accounts and see. Clearly you can see that you, you were owing SARS money. How much were you owing SARS? You were owing SARS an amount of 11,000 Rand. So if we issue a check to pay SARS, the moment you see issued a check, immediately tells you that it's the bank account involved, correct? What's happening to my bank account? It's decreasing in value, therefore credited. Now, if we were doing the accounting equation and bank was involved, the first question that you ask yourself is, what is the status not your status, but the status <laughs> of the bank account. Mm. Okay, what am I referring to? Is bank an asset or a liability? Am I told that the bank account is in overdraft? Then definitely it is a liability. But in this case here, we know that we're not doing the accounting equation, we're doing the ledger account, but the entry remains the same. What's the entry? A credit to bank, why? In this case here, asset decreasing in value, and a debit to my SARS income tax. Remember, my entry is bank because I'm paying it from my CPJ. The amount is 11,000 Rand. And, be, and notice what's happening, that my liability is decreasing because I'm paying the liability. I'm paying the amount due to SARS. Who else am I paying? I'm paying my shareholders. So therefore, there's my account, shareholders for dividends, liability, double entry, 
Once again, notice, I always talk about the double entry. What's my double entry in this case here? A debit to shareholders for dividends. Why? Liability decreasing in value, therefore debited. Detail. Now, obviously, you notice that I'm not, I'm not highly, uh, I'm not focusing that much on the dates. However, in the exams, please, I appeal to you, make sure that you complete the account in its entirety. Put in the dates, put in the folio references. It's just now that we're we, we explaining this, that we are taking the shortcut. Do not take the shortcut in the exams. Make sure that you complete the account in its entirety with the dates, the folio references, etc. Okay, so in our case here, my double entry is bank, therefore, notice, that I'm debiting my, my shareholders for dividends. Why? Liability decreasing in value. I'm paying it. I've issued a check. My bank account is credited. I'm debiting shareholders for dividends with the amount that I owe them, 140,000 Rand. Okay, got that. So I've done the next transaction that was required of me. And what was that? I've paid the amounts due to the shareholders and I've paid the amount due to SARS. Got that? Right, let's move on. We're now in April. What happens now? The company paid provisional tax of 230,000 Rand. Now remember, in terms of the Companies Act, in terms of legislation, a company, by virtue of it being a company, has to pay provisional tax. What happens is that after six months of trading, the company then has to do its calculations and an amount is to be paid over to SARS. Right, so what do we say? We say that the company paid, that's the important part, provisional tax of 230,000 Rand. Let's deal with that transaction first. Once again, ask yourself the question, which are my two accounts involved? The company paid, that means they issued a check. What's happening to my bank account? Decreasing credited. What do I debit? I debit my SARS income tax. My detail is bank because that's my contra entry, and the amount was 230,000. Okay. Why is it doing that? 230,000, just to clarify, clarify it for you so you can see exactly the entry. So what's my double entry? A debit to SARS income tax and a credit to bank. Now, if you look at your SARS income tax upon closer scrutiny, what do you find? You find that your SARS income tax has a debit of 230,000 Rand. That's correct, because at this stage, after six months of trading, we have made an advance payment to SARS, and therefore SARS owes us that money. Got it? So at this point here, if I ask you, what type of an account is SARS income tax? Surely your response would be, SARS income tax is an asset. Why? Debit balance. Can you see it? Good. So keep this in mind, that these are provisional payments that we have made, and at this point, the SARS income tax has a debit balance. Right. The other part of the transaction was, uh, where we, here we go, and we paid an interim dividend of 15 cents per share. Right. Now, obviously, in a company, what happens during the year? The company will pay an interim dividend. Pay an interim dividend. Okay, now, firstly, the calculation. Let's do the calculation first. And it also says, the question goes further and says, this was applicable to all shareholders. Everybody was entitled to the interim dividend. Okay. Now we've got to go back and s ask ourselves, how many shares have we issued to date? Let's look at the information. 
Here we had, here we had 1,600,000 shares, which were the shares at the beginning of the year, right? And subsequent to that, we sold a further 900,000 shares. So in other words, what are we saying? We are saying that we had 1,600,000 shares, Right? Plus a further 900,000 shares. Okay? To give me a, a total number of shares that have been issued to be 2,500,000. That's the number of shares that have been issued. Okay. So when you're calculating your dividend, you calculate it on the number of issued shares. Please, grade 12s, the number of issued shares so therefore there's my number of issued shares what was my dividend times comma one five it was 15 cents per share and this gives me a value of where's my answer three hundred and seventy five thousand rand okay got that so what's the three hundred seventy five thousand that's the value of the interim dividend that has been paid okay so my entry, notice that my two accounts involved would be ordinary share dividends, 375,000 Rand. Remember, I'm debiting my ordinary share dividends. Why? It's an expense to the company, right? So debit to my expense account, ordinary share dividends. It was paid. I issued a check, so I credit bank therefore my contra entry would be bank so once again once again what is it that i have to take note of i have to remember that when an interim dividend is paid my double entry is a debit to ordinary share dividends because that's my expense and a credit to my bank account because the dividend has been paid this is with specific reference to the interim dividend okay coming back to my question so now what have I done I've got the provisional tax is sorted out the interim dividend is sorted out I now come to the end of my accounting period at the end of the accounting period the company made a second provisional tax payment of a hundred and eighty thousand Rand. Okay? So, clearly you can see a company makes two payments during the year. Six months after trading and towards the end of the financial year, the second provisional tax payment is made to SARS. So, at the end of the accounting period, the company made a second provisional tax payment of 180,000 Rand. Two accounts involved. At this stage, you should be shouting out the answers. Two accounts involved. A debit to, that's right, SARS income tax, 180,000 Rand. My detail is bank. And a credit to my bank account because that's the amount of money that's leaving my business. Right. Okay, AB, mm -hmm. is it time for a break already? Almost there. We can take a break. Can we take a yeah, break? Okay, guys, once again, remain focused. Look at the entries that we've made so far. And as we go along, tick off the questions that we have answered. All that we've done in this particular one, the last entry that we've made, is we've made the second provisional tax payment to SARS. When does that happen? That happens at the end of my financial year. Right. So keep that in mind. We're getting to the final accounts. So, you have a quick break, freshen up, and make sure that we have your mind, your body, and your soul with us. Mm. Nice one, and it's quick. As quick as it may be, you also have the challenge question mm. to answer quickly. So, my sisters, we'll see you after this quick break.
Welcome back, awesome accounting buffins. Now, the last competition for today, we have the SA Water Game competition. It is a South African water game a competition that is aimed at creating an awareness or building an awareness on the use of water because we all know that water, it is one of the scarce resource and most useful resource that we all need. So all you need to do is to register and play on www.watergame.co.za on our Facebook page, hashtag SA Water Game. They're great and cool prizes to be won so you play and learn at the same time great stuff yeah okay guys make sure you enter isn't it yes right coming back we said accounting boffins we want your mind your body and your soul so pay attention because we're coming to critical parts that are examinable and you should now be okay with so please pay attention right what was the next part of my question Remember, I only did one part of the transaction, which was the second provisional tax payment. Now they said the director's watch terminology. Okay? You remember RTFQ? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm. The director's declared. No mention is made of payment. The director's declared a final dividend of 22 cents per share. This was applicable to all shareholders. Right, what do I do? Step number one, calculate the number of issued shares. It hasn't changed because I told you it was applicable to all shareholders. Right, we know that we had 2,500,000 shares. If you recall, it was 1,600,000 at the beginning plus the further 900,000 that we sold to give me a value of 2,500,000. 100, 1, 2, 3, that's the number of issued shares multiplied by the dividend. In this case, the final dividend was, where is it? The final dividend was 22 cents per share. So what do we do? We multiply this by comma 2, 2, and my answer is 550,000. Now be careful. This dividend was not Paid. It was declared at the end of the year. So definitely, bank is not involved. What is involved? It's a debit to my nominal account, namely ordinary shared dividends. Let's go to my ordinary shared dividends account. And the amount was 550,000. Therefore, a debit of five. 150,000 notice that it's not paid so it cannot be bank it has to be what shareholders for dividends that's right so my contra entry for a dividend that is declared at the end of the year is what a debit to ordinary share dividends your nominal account another name for it by the way is dividends on ordinary shares Six of one and half a dozen of the other, same account. So debit your expense account and you credit your contra is shareholders for dividends. Now once again you notice that Ashraf is abbreviating. You will not do that in the exams. Shareholders for dividends. Go to your shareholders for dividends account and notice that we're going to credit this because it's a liability, ordinary share dividends, and the amount is 550,000. Okay, done and dusted. Back to my question. The company directors decided to buy back 200,000 shares from a shareholder, C. Crawford, at 2 rand 80 per share. A check was issued to her. Now, critical. Step number one. Let us determine the value of the check that we have to issue. How are we going to do that? Very simple. We're buying back 200,000 shares times 2.8, which is 2 rand 80 to give me a value of 560,000. 
560,000 is the amount of money we're going to pay to that shareholder to buy back the shares. Right, now, if that's a credit to my bank, where does my debit go to? And this is the interesting part of the question. Watch carefully. What do we say? We say, fine. The shares were bought back at 2 rand and 80 cents. But what was the average price of my shares? And in order to calculate that, I go to my ordinary share capital account and I say, fine, add the value of my ordinary share capital, which is 3,200,000. Plus the 2,700,000. What am I doing? I'm adding the value of my shares, the rand value of my shares together, which is equal to 5,900,000. I then divide it by the number of shares represented by that ordinary share capital figure. And you do recall that figure was what? It was the 1,600,000 plus the 900,000, which is 2,500,000. 2,500,000, 1, 2, 3. And you will notice that I get a value of 2 rand and 36 cents. So clearly you can see that the average price of these shares is 2 rand and 36 cents. But I paid how much? I paid 2 rand and 80 cents for these shares. Now, these are the accounts that we are going to be using when we are calculating the buyback price. We have to separate the buyback into two components, right? What are those two components? Those two components are one, ordinary share capital, which will have the average price, and number two, the price above the average price will go to my retained income. Let's do that. Okay, so 236 is the average price. Multiply that by 200, 1, 2, 3, and it gives me a value of 472,000 Rand. Okay, so now watch this. In my ordinary share capital, 472,000 Rand, 472,000 Rand. I'm debiting my ordinary share capital and my amount is, the contra entry is bank. Got that? Now clearly you ask yourself the question. Go back here and say, right. Remember it was 2 Rand and 36 cents. Now I say, fine. Let's cancel that. 2 Rand 80 minus 2 Rand 36 to give me a value of 44 cents. That was the price above the average price that I paid. Multiply that by 200, 1, 2, 3, and my answer is 88,000 Rand. Therefore, the 88,000 Rand will impact on my retained income account, 88,000 Rand. Clearly, you can see this. I want you to see this, that your 472,000 plus your 88,000 would give you the total amount that you have bought back of shares. But the split is the average price in the ordinary share capital account and the price above the average price in my retained income account. What do I now do? Okay, what am I gonna do now? Now I'm gonna say, fine, it's the end of the year and I now need to bring in my income tax. I'm told in my question that the net profit, watch here, let's take the question from here. It says here, the audit was completed, the net income before tax was calculated to be 1,300,000. Taxation, let's calculate the taxation at 30%. So we say 1,300,123 times 30, and my answer is 390,000 Rand. That's my income tax. What's my double entry? My double entry is a debit to income tax, 390,000 Rand, and a credit to 
which account to my SARS income tax account 390,000 rand. Notice that all your balance sheet accounts will be balanced, but very, very important, grade 12s, we have to do this year. Remember, the two expenses that I close off, I will close off my income tax and my ordinary share dividends to my appropriation account. Okay, and when I bring in my profit, which was 1,300,000, that's my profit and loss figure, right? I now subtract my income tax, which was 395,000. And I also subtract my dividends, which were, my total dividends were, let me add my dividends, it's 375,000. plus 550,000 to give me a total of 925,000. Watch, there's 925,000. Okay, now you're gonna notice something strange here. Watch, if I take 1,300,000, 1,300,000, And I subtract 395,000 minus 925,000. Is it 390? I think we, we got an error here. That's why I'm getting a mistake there. Let's just pick it up. The income tax figure was 390,000. Thank you very much. Let's do this here. Let's erase this one here. 390,000. Okay, so we got 390,000 as the income tax figure. Now, let's add. So once again, we say 1,300,000, 1, 2, 3, minus 390,000, minus 925,000, and my answer is 15,000. But be careful. In this case here, notice what happens. You will find that in your appropriation account, you have 15,000 Rand on the credit side and you are debiting your retained income account. In other words, you have used of last year's retained income. You had to use it this year for equalization of dividends. Sorry guys. To the end of the show. But let's, let's just give them uh, the answer to the challenge question. Oh yes, the yes. answer to your <laughs> challenge question. The answer was given in our lesson. Simple. Ordinary share capital divided by the number of issued shares. And that's how you no calculate. Power value. <laughs> no power value, guys. Non-existent. Issue price. So you take the total share capital divided by the number of shares issued. Guys, Get there, you're definitely going to be aim for the a moon. All you're right. going to be an accounting shining, shining star. star. Well Cheers. Well. Until the next time, keep your feet on the ground and be good. Well said. Bye bye. Peace, y'all.